Hi guys, this is Andrew. And this is Jules. Welcome back to Code School. Today we are going to talk about our Wackadot game. This game is similar to the carnival game Whack-A-Mole. In class, we use the stopwatch game to learn about timers. In Pi game, we're using Wackadot. In this game, a dot appears in a random spot, and the player has a limited time to click the dot. The sooner they click the dot, the more points they get. If the timer runs out, they get a miss. If they get too many misses, they lose a life, and if they lose all their lives, the game is over. The game also keeps track of high scores in a data file. The code includes a couple of helper classes, one to handle initializing, loading, and saving the high scores, and another to handle starting and stopping timers. Speaking of timers, let's go over how timers work in Pygame. To make a timer in Pygame, you use the Pygame Time module's setTimer function. This function takes an event ID and an integer representing the timer's tick duration in milliseconds. The event ID is just a number from 1 to 32. Unfortunately, though, the first 23 event IDs are already taken by Pygame to handle things like focus changes and video resizes, and things we've already worked with like quit and mouse events. Number 24 is user event. To make sure we don't use any of those ID numbers to create our timer events, we just use pygame user event plus a modifier we called base and then added a number to that. We didn't need to start at 26, we could have started with 24. And obviously this approach won't work if we want to create a bunch of timer events since we are limited to only 32. In the future, we will be addressing this and showing another way to do this, but for this simple game, this is sufficient. The timer will then add an event with the specified event ID to the event queue after each duration. You can stop a timer by calling setTimer again, passing the same event ID and a duration of zero. Once you've started a timer, you can check for the timer event just like you check for other types of events. Then you handle the event as you would any other. Each event ID can only have one timer at a time. So if you change the duration of a timer, again using set timer, you don't need to stop it first. Just change the timer events to a new one, and the system will start creating events with that event ID using the new duration. Being able to create our own events really opens up the customization that Pygame allows. Now let's take a look at this game in action. When we first start it up, the first timer event, Screensaver, is started. This will cycle back and forth between the title page and the high scores page. Once we click to start the game, we transition to the game start state, and the game start timer is started. This initiates a countdown to get the player ready. When this is over, we transition to the playing state, and the playing timer is started. This timer is used to determine if the player has clicked the circle within a specific time, and then it also is used to help calculate how many points the player earns based on how quickly they click the dot. After the player has accumulated three misses, they lose a life, and the game transitions back to the game start state. This does a ready check countdown as before, and then transitions back to the playing state. When the player has no lives left, the game ends. If the player has a high enough score, they are allowed to enter their score. This is then saved to a file and the game transitions back to the screensaver state. What's really great about this game is how easy it is to test a state. We can start with any state and see how it works. This is really useful while building a game and especially helpful in debugging since we can start the game at the state you are working with instead of always having to begin at the beginning. The game further illustrates the power and beauty of states. By using states, we've created a modular system of pluggable components that can be used in other games. For example, the screensaver state just switches back and forth between the title screen and the list of high scores. This can easily be used in other games. 
To make this game, we needed to make some adjustments to our UI class and PG Extra. To always get the most updated code, be sure to go to our GitHub page. There is a link in the forum. We've changed the folder names on GitHub to help you find the code you're looking for easier. The code is in the code folder instead of videos. Inside that folder are folders for each video we've released by the name of the video subtitle. For example, today's video is titled Timers, so you can click in this folder for the code we are using today. There is also a folder called Utilities. This is where we will keep modules like UI, PG Extra, and File Helper. This folder will always have the latest versions of these modules. Do remember though, when you run a file, all modules it needs to access must be in the same folder or in the direct Python path in the Site Packages folder. For our UI class, we needed to add text alignment to our draw text method. We needed to add some draw methods, and we needed to update the draw text method to use a font file, rather than using the Pygame default font. We also went a step further and created a UI context class. This is an abstraction that contains the settings used by the UI class, things like screen dimensions, font sizes, and colors. Now when you create an instance of the UI class, you only pass it the target and an optional argument called context. If you leave off this context argument, the UI uses the defaults it did previously for things like screen resolution, foreground and background colors, and font size. But if you don't like these choices, you can create your own context. You can change all of the defaults or just some. Then when you create the UI class, just pass this UI context object in. Even better though, you can change between contexts at any time by using the with statement. The way this works is you type with followed by a call to self.ui.newContext followed by a colon. The call to new context is passed a new UI context object. The with statement wraps a block of code. The code inside this block is governed by the settings in the context we pass to the new context method. When the block exits, the previous context is restored. We will be adding more functionality to this in the near future, but we wanted to give you this easy way to customize default settings now, so you can start playing around with it. We will be releasing another video sometime in the next 24 hours that will go over drawing and collisions that we used in Wackadot. It will also give information about the optional assignment for this week. Next week, Andrew will be out of town, so I will be releasing some extra content you might find interesting, including some difficulties I've encountered. If there is anything that is confusing you at this point, please post it in the forum in the suggestions thread. Depending on your feedback, we may release more detailed explanation videos of code or Pygame syntax, or whatever else may be causing confusion. Thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe to this channel and visit us on our forum.